Hi guys, my name is Wayne Metter. Thank you for joining me. I wanted to do a short video series on cold frames and today we're going to be talking about planning a cold frame and how we're going to take something like this and turn it into this. What are cold frames? Well, you know, a cold frame is just something that's simply a box to grow plants in that's naturally not heated. You've not added any artificial heat and what you typically will find is that you can average 5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit warmer inside a cold frame than what you would outside uh, growing conditions, which that's kind of handy because you can extend your growing season uh, at the beginning of the year uh, or at the end of the year to give you just a little bit longer life uh, with some of your plants and even help you grow in, in our conditions down here in the south, grow uh, plants year-round through the winter without having a greenhouse. Now another use that people like to use cold frames for simply just to overwinter woody plants. So sometimes you might have maybe an avocado tree or, or um, uh, I would consider maybe a pineapple, a woody type plant or a banana tree, and I'm trying to overwinter it, uh, a cold frame is a great place to do that. Now the, one of the reasons why I wanted to build a cold frame uh, that was so high off the ground uh, was simply that, so that we could put in some fairly large plants grow heads of cabbage, etc. through the winter because we want to eat healthy food and we're trying to help you do the same thing. Now when you're trying to figure out where to put your cold frame, you always want your cold frame facing south, just as if you were putting solar panels up on your house or if you're planting your garden, you always want to have south facing sun because that's where the majority of your heat's going to come from in the winter. Now I've created this cold frame with a slope on the roof so that it can help to absorb some of that heat and that sunlight can bounce off of the tin on the back side here, which allows us to, to build heat on the inside a little bit quicker and maintain a better heat throughout, uh, throughout the, the evening and nighttime to protect these plants. Now some other things you can do is you can throw straw bales around this, you can stack up insulation or whatever you want to try to insulate this cold frame or any cold frame that you build. Your cold frame doesn't have to look like mine. Um, but the key factor here is that you can use anything that you have in your environment. And I'm looking around my environment, looking at the things that I have, and I have trees and dirt. And, uh, you know, I do have some insulation and little bits and pieces, and we're going to try some of that later. But these trees produce leaves at the end of the year, and those leaves can be piled around these cold frames, which will dramatically give you uh, more geothermal mass that the sun will heat up during the day and also help to prevent air leak, uh, air leakage around the outside edges of these cold frames. Now cold frame construction, like I mentioned before, it's typically sloped down with it being higher in the back and lower in the front. Now I looked at a lot of resources and honestly I can't find uh, where it would tell us the best slope um, to have from the, the back to the front. But in my case, uh, what I found was a general rule of thumb is one inch drop per foot. Uh, now we've got about two and a half feet here, or not quite two and a half feet, and I've got well more than two, two inches of drop from the back to the front in this case, but I chose to do that because I built these things up so high off the ground so that we really could focus on trying to tilt the window up and get more of that sunlight in while it's at a lower angle uh, through the winter, fall and winter and springtime. When you're building your cold frame, you're going to want to think about some kind of construction. In this case, we've used glass uh, storm windows, and uh, you can use anything. You can use any kind of plastic or translucent material. Uh, 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 people uh, use greenhouse plastic, um, uh, other you know, plexiglass, and other types of material. In this case here, uh, you could even use some type of a, uh, a skylight material, uh, and this is a, like a barn siding uh, or skylight or roofing material. Um, now you could use that, and that would be perfectly fine here on the top, but a clear glass is going to give you more sunlight that will get through and your plants will do a lot better. Now for ventilation, on those warm days where the sun's beating down, and even though it might be chilly on the outside, your greenhouse, or your cold frame in this case, is going to really heat up on the inside. So you're going to want to ventilate it. So I've built this cold frame to have a little leg that kicks down and rests. Uh, to hold the lid up and allow that cool, uh, good, fresh, clean air to process during the day while it's nice and warm out. Cold frames are heated just like a hot frame is heated. It's heated from the ground below it. 
But the, the deal with the cold frame is you don't have any active heater down below your cold frame to keep this warm. So it's very important that as soon as it gets evening time and the sun starts to go down, um, about like it is right now, it's about five o'clock in the evening here, uh, that you close your sash or that you close your window and your cold frame to conserve all that geothermal energy that's built up in the ground during the day. Up next, video two in this series, we're going to talk about how to build the cold frames. I'm going to walk you through from beginning to end how I built the cold frame, give you some tips and some pointers to think about when you're building a structure, and uh, give you some also measurements and layout for these cold frames. So if you'd like to build something about like this, um, you're more than welcome to do so, and you have all the resources you need. Thank you so much for following along with me and my channel here. And most importantly, I want to thank you for watching this video. Now, if you've watched this video to this point, now would be a time to ask you to give us a thumbs up. Uh, I, I think it would be prudent to ask that. But secondly, and more importantly, uh, I'm going to be putting this video in a playlist for cold frames. And it's going to be our little mini-series of cold frames here on the channel. Now, if you'd like to find out more about how to build a cold frame, please add this video in the playlist to your favorites and come back because we're going to have more coming up.